soft matters. Talking physics, talking life. Today on The Physics Factor, I have the pleasure of interviewing Professor Jim Sethna here in the Cornell Physics Department. Thank you, Jim, for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. And you have the distinction of being the first theorist that I've interviewed for this series. I see. So I guess maybe what's the appeal of theory to you? It's just a blast. It's like being being paid to do crossword puzzles when you really enjoy doing crossword puzzles, like that, right? Yeah. You're, 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 you're spending your time figuring out puzzles about the way nature works. Mm -hmm. There are some aspects of physics that are shared between lots of fields. Mm -hmm. So the high energy physicists have interesting feeling that you can study quantum mechanics without understanding relativity. Okay. And you can study relativistic quantum mechanics without understanding the nucleus. <laughs> and you can study strong interaction in the nucleus without understanding strings, that, that, that hierarchy is, is, is based on the idea that each of these levels is almost independent of the other levels. That you don't need the one below you it. You don't need to, to know understand. all the details to get the, the uh, quantum mechanics right. Okay. You don't need to know about the strings. Mm -hmm. My kind of physics, um, which is basically trying to understand what you can see and touch. Mm -hmm. We also have the same kind of thing. You don't need to know how all the atoms are colliding to understand the sound waves. Right. That the rules for sound are the same if I am speaking in through nitrogen or through helium. What we find is that in systems biology, where we don't have any simple reason for this to happen, mm -hmm. it happens too. Okay, interesting. That in systems biology you have all these proteins inside your cell and they all interact in these complicated ways and they interact with the DNA and they interact with the RNA and, they, and there's all these reaction constants and they all uh, depend on the organism in some complicated way and, and nobody actually bothers to measure all those parameters. Okay. The biologists think they're boring. <laughs> And, like and the like physicists go into the field and say, how can you possibly study all these things if you don't know all the reaction rates? <laughs> and it turns out, after many years of fiddling around, we keep seeing that the actual numbers don't matter. The biologists are completely right. They are boring. Um, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a theory there that demands numbers, it's just only a few combinations of the numbers matter. Okay. And the same way that our models for the biology inside cells, I, I, I fear to tell you, are kind of <laughs> schematic. We don't have all those molecules in there. We only keep a few molecules and we only care about their interactions and then when we measure the rate constants they're all wrong compared to the ones we use in practice, but we say that's because of all the things we've left out. Not only all the things we've left out are unimportant, but most of the things we've kept are unimportant for the behavior. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what we call sloppiness. It's sort of like in physics, the, 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 the density of the air and the compressibility of the air tells you about sound, and all the other details don't matter. Okay. And if, and if, you, and if you didn't understand about those collective variables, if you instead fiddled around with all of the molecules, mm -hmm. you'd say, gee, look at this, I can get the same behavior if I make my gas molecules heavier, but, but closer together, or something like that. Mm -hmm. there, there would be a whole family of different combinations of molecules that gave exactly the same nice. behavior, and I couldn't tell the difference by looking at things, as long as I only measured stuff well, on the big, slow scales of people, I'd never be able to tell the difference as long as I only look at how the cell behaves as a whole, mm -hmm. I can't tell the difference between having these reaction constants fast and those slow, or these fast and those slow, mm -hmm. that, that all that matters is the combination. Okay. And the fact that you can still do science with incomplete information, even about the basic constituents of what's going on, is reflection of the fact that, that those details of course matter for some things, mm -hmm. but much of the description, much of the explanatory power is, is independent of those details in, 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 in many cases. In the early days, people were so excited about the fact that they knew the rules, and, and as we're 
going on, there are cases where we, we know why the simple rules work, even though we don't know the underlying rules completely. Mm -hmm. We really don't know string theory completely. Right. And, and yet, we can see why uh, our understanding of nuclei uh, probably is absolutely correct, even though we don't know where it comes from completely. Mm -hmm. Because it, it hangs together, it makes sense by itself, and you can see why a lot of different microscopic theories might give the same understanding of nuclei. That's in a sense the key that, that, that makes science work is that we're only really good at explaining things that don't depend so much on the underlying details. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for talking with me today. This has been fascinating. At the time, I was very dogmatic that it had to be true. Okay. I remember reading some things when I was a little kid, and, and, and I would say, this essay, you know, I would read this book, and I would say, this is, this is fiction. Why am I reading this? Polluting my brain with things that aren't really aren't really facts, aren't really true. And, and you mean like novels or yeah, like novels, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it, wasn't until, it wasn't until junior high that I discovered science fiction that I decided it was okay. This was a good compromise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh,